Welcome to my tutorial on mid-air car control. Let's jump right in. So the wheels are going to turn counterclockwise from this angle, right? That means our car is going to turn clockwise. Basically, whatever direction the wheels spin, the car is going to move in the opposite direction. Newton's law and all that. We stop the wheels and we cancel that. Or if we were already spinning the wheels when we jumped into the air, we pitch those down. You can think of hitting the brakes the same as basically flooring it in reverse. With front wheel drive, we also have the ability to control the roll of the car. Whichever way we point the wheels, we're going to rotate in the opposite direction. So we point them left, we roll right. This means if you're ever rolling through the air in a way you don't want to go, like I was saying, if you are rolling in a direction that's going to send you into the ground in a way that can't land very well, turn in the direction of the roll. That is how you cancel it. Now we have the other two-wheel drive drivetrain, rear-wheel drive. Not much we can do with this, just accelerate to get the nose up, brake to get the nose down, and with especially powerful engines, we're also going to roll from the drivetrain and engine inertia reactions. But you can't really control those mid-air all that accurately. And now we have all-wheel drive, the most controllable. We have control of both the pitch and the roll, as much as you can possibly have. Now the only thing about this is that you if you need the car to stay nose down, but you also need to fix the roll, you don't really have that option. So sometimes you can exacerbate whatever problem you're in and end up crashing anyways. So that's just how it is. Because you usually don't have enough time to throw it into reverse to pitch the nose down and control your roll. Now that you get the basics of how this works, let's look at some applied knowledge. First off, we'll start with the second most controllable of the drivetrains, front-wheel drive. With this, not only can we control the pitch of the car, we can also control the roll. We roll in the opposite direction of whichever way we turn the wheels. So we're rolling left, so we turn left to counteract the roll. We could also try and do a goofy barrel roll, but that's probably not going to turn out super well. Usually you're not going to have that much air time, so it's best to just keep the car flat with the ground, I would probably say. Next up we'll be using all-wheel drive, the most controllable drivetrain. If we understand how to control the car in the air, we can land very smoothly and make it do things that it should not be able to do. So we can pitch it too high and then we'll land really badly or we can apply what we discussed and we can control the pitch to get exactly what we need the car to do to actually land. Now, from that height, uh, yeah, you're not really gonna do much, but we landed perfectly flat. That's how much control we have with all-wheel drive. Last, and technically least, we have rear-wheel drive where we can only control the pitch, but the more power we have and the more weight we have in the wheels, the more we can affect the pitch. You see we can dive the nose down very easily by hitting the brakes or we can keep accelerating to keep the car pitching upwards. Stopping the wheels in the middle of a roll can also sometimes help gather the car and stop the gigantic wreck you're about to end up in. Not very often, but sometimes you can influence control a little bit. And that's the basics of mid-air car control. One last demonstration. This isn't technically mid-air car control, it's takeoff car control, but it affects just as much of what you can actually do in the air. If you hit the brakes coming off of a jump, you're going to nose down much more aggressively, and if you floor it as you come off a jump, you're going to pitch up much more aggressively. And if you have like medium throttle, you're going to have about a neutral attitude through the air. If you have the takeoff like too extreme in one direction, there's no amount of gasp or 
break manipulation that's going to save you, so just something to keep in mind. Hope that's helpful for all my rally and Baja drivers out there. Thanks for watching.